Of all the games I used to play in my younger wilder days, the game of clubs and tees it never crossed my mind. But after some discussion with my closest, dearest friends, I decided that. Welcome in to yet another episode of the Turn Fancy Golf Podcast. As always, my name is Andrew Putters. This is my friend, head golf editor at rotoballer.com, Joe Nicely. Joe, we had one heck of a week. I feel like this week's going to be a big letdown uh, after after last week. Uh, before we get into uh, rotoballer.com, Joe, John Rom walks off the course, six-shot lead. I, I wasn't watching it. Uh, as you can see, I'm here on vacation right now. Uh, shooting from the road, but uh, John Rom walks off the course. Did they tell him on air? How did that go down? Yeah, man. Um, and that's kind of my kind of my issue with the whole John Rom situation. Uh, the guy's got a six shot lead. He's setting at eighteen under. Uh, I believe broke the fifty four hole record uh, for the Memorial, and he walks off the eighteenth uh, green. Uh, I think it's a doctor or some type of PGA Tour official waiting on him and breaks the news to him uh when he's about four feet off the green uh when he just had an unbelievable round and has the tournament in hand has a six shot lead would have had a six shot lead going into sunday and they they notify the guy right there uh green side basically um the uh telecast was kind of taken by surprise john rom obviously was kind of doubled over in, in disappointment so you know that's that's my huge thing uh kind of my problem didn't like the way they went about it. Uh, I mean, we can we can argue to the cows come home as far as uh, whether it's right or wrong. Uh, you know, the vaccination issue. Uh, I believe the PGA Tours policy is they're not testing guys that have been vaccinated. So, you know, by that logic, obviously, Rom hasn't been vaccinated. That's a whole other bundle of issues there, um, as of whether whether you're vaccinated or not. But really, really unfortunate situation, man. When it all comes down to it, no matter who the player uh is in that situation um john rom obviously a well-known player but th this was kind of the fear uh when we when we started golf back that this was that this would happen at some point uh took over a year for it to happen but eventually did um but but it's kind of one of those things ap golf got back to uh playing kind of before any other sport they they uh, instituted a very strict testing policy they've they've stuck by that things have went relatively great um, so it's just really unfortunate all the way around, man. I mean, surely they didn't find out at 6 p.m. on Saturday night that he had tested positive or had traces of uh, COVID. Why, I wonder why they, you know, couldn't stop him on 13 or on 8, you know, and just say, hey, we got to pull. If it's that serious of an issue, we got to go ahead and pull him off the course. If it's not that serious of an issue, figure out a way to get him in the, uh, the next day. However, I understand we can't have preferential treatment for the guy leading the tournament versus a guy that's in, say, 63rd, right? Yeah, my understanding, um, and, and I've seen different things. Uh, I'm sure we all have. Um, so we won't dive too far into the PGA Tours policy because that's something, you know, the folks listening can look up if they want to want to get deeper into that. But my understanding was that you have to have two negative tests. And – they were awaiting these results from the second test uh, for Rom, which is why it was kind of later in the day Saturday. Um, he apparently knew going into the tournament. Uh, the tournament organizers knew. John Rom knew that he had he had been in close contact uh, with someone that had tested positive for COVID. Um, instead of electing to withdraw prior to the tournament, he's he's allowed to play and did test ne negative leading up to the tournament. But then um, I, I believe he was tested daily because he was in the kind of the close contact protocol and, uh, and apparently Saturday is the one that came back negative two negative tests, uh, which is, which is why it's kind of later in the day. So just a, just a crazy situation, man. Um, I, I hear people saying, you know, why couldn't he play by himself? Um, you know, this, that, and the other, uh, and, and there's certainly arguments to be made there. Uh, I'm not a huge ROM fan by any means. I, I respect his talent think he's a great player what he what he was doing was amazing um i think he's a guy we're going to be talking about for years to come and in, in huge events and major championships so it's just it's just really unfortunate for it to happen to anybody man could not agree more joe um so yeah uh, on, on better news it's about 7 45 eastern on time on monday we're shooting this 
Um, uh, and I've just had a chance, just got back from dinner, just had a chance to glance at a few scores. Looks like David Shore from Knoxville native, uh, Holson, Holson Hills Country Club member, uh, just recently turned pro uh, a few weeks ago, has, uh, has uh, qualified, sectional qualify for the U.S. Open at Torrey Pines. Uh, I believe it's the 121st uh, showing of the U.S. Open, which is great. Knoxville kid getting to go. Um, uh, our man, Ryan, Ryan Hall, missed out on a couple of strokes getting in, looks like. Going to be a couple of shorts oh, getting in right. down in Georgia as well. So, But, you know, he's still an amateur. We still got time to, to spin that wheel, buddy. But um, there's, I'm sure there's going to be more Knoxville guys getting in. That's just the ones I could have catch uh, real quick before we got on. Like we said, Monday, 745 Eastern, when we're recording this, and by you know we don't know nothing about this tournament, folks. Uh, you know we we've had a chance to glance at the field, glance at the pay scales that DraftKings has put out, but other than that, man, brand new golf tournament, Joe. So uh, before we get into that, let's talk about Rotoballer.com, Joe. What do they got going for going for us right now? Is a special deal uh, headed into uh, this week and next week? Uh, like I said, the U.S. Open. Yeah, man, we got we got great content over there. We're always looking to improve. Um, I actually just just brought on a new team member this week, Andy Lack, um, who does uh, the Pick the Puff Golf Podcast, Pick the Pup Podcast. Um, so, uh, any of you guys that are familiar with Andy, know he's a really talented, uh, extremely hardworking young guy. Uh, we're bringing him in and really happy to have him on the Roto Baller team. Uh, Spencer Aguiar is the main man over there. Uh, kills it every week with his model. Uh, his Vegas report, Josh Bennett's doing course breakdowns every week. So we feel like we've got you covered in every every way possible. Um, also got lots of free content over there, but we do want to encourage you to check out our PGA premium package. Uh, we're running it right now for $69.99. And, and I just talked to the bosses over there, Andrew. If you sign up right now at rotoballer.com uh, for the $69.99 PGA premium package, you can lock that price in for life. Uh, you can renew that indefinitely for 69 bucks a year it's normally uh 129 and then we kind of reduce it down to 99 as the year goes on but right now you can use promo code nice n-i-c-e sign up for 69 bucks and you can have that price uh basically as long as you want uh renew it every year so definitely go over there and check it out rotoballer.com best place in the world for your daily fantasy needs thank you joe now palmetto championship at the congaree uh, like I said, brand new tournament, brand new golf course in Ridgeland, South, in Rich, Ridgeland, South Carolina is where this golf, uh, Congaree Golf Club is. Uh, we believe it's in the place uh, of the uh, Canadian Open, the PGA Canadian Open. Uh, you know, a lot of chatter about the John Rahm and the COVID stuff. Be thankful we're down here in the lower 48 because up in Canada, they're still not really, I'm not even sure if they're playing golf yet, Joe, out in public. So uh, <clears throat> this tournament, like I said, in, in place of that, which – I'm unfortunate Canadian Open is a great tournament every year with a huge field, always fun to watch. Now, this golf course, Joe, first of all, course architect, 2017 Tom Fazio, uh, one of the most, well, probably one of the most well-known or is the most well-known uh, current course designer out there, course architect out there. Uh, the Congaree, like I said, is only four years old. Last year's ranked 39 in uh, the Do Golf Digest Top 100. Uh, 2018, it was rated best new private course in America. Uh, it's it's built to play firm and fast. We got Bermuda throughout, Champion Bermuda and Jeff Graham Bermuda throughout, and uh, it's built to play firm and fast. Uh, um, you know, it's got a base sand line uh, underneath uh, all that Bermuda. So, um, you know, as far as the superintendent, David Barrett, very well respected. Two previous jobs he had, Pine Valley, Diamond, Diamond Creek, two uh, huge um, in the golf world. It's two huge jobs there as far as uh, course superintendents are, are concerned. And the only negative is maybe is Barrett hasn't had that long to prepare for this. Uh, they, they, they found out just, you know, a few short months ago they were going to have it here. But that being said, I'm sure that they're going to have everything together. Par 71, 76.55 is the yardage setup. Joe, I think I've hit everything I can think of, but uh, what else you got for me on the golf course? Yeah, man, we're, we're guessing a lot. Um, 
we're guessing a lot about as to how this golf course golf course is going to play as you mentioned ap relatively new golf course i think just built four or five years ago um but it, but it certainly made an impression in the kind of the golf community at large um number 39 in golf golf digest top 100 like you mentioned uh tom fazio who a uh, very, very prominent guy and did shadow creek uh, kind of immediately comes to mind and this is actually uh, a really cool layout really neat design uh hearing a lot of comparisons to royal melbourne uh where the president's cup was and i think you mentioned andrew firm and fast man that's going to be the name of the game this week uh four par fives for these these guys to fire at uh basically no rough um so i'm certainly weighing driving distance this week i'm looking for the bombers to have a bit of an advantage because they they will have room to operate off these tees um, but we also don't want to discount the accurate guys, uh, guys that can handle kind of playing the ball on the ground a little bit. Um, so, you know, there's tons of waste bunkers everywhere, which is kind of rem reminiscent of Kiwa Island, uh, which is also in South Carolina. So that's something we want to take into consideration, man. But yeah, wh when you take in the, into account AP that this is kind of an unknown quantity golf course. And then when you look at the quality of this field, um, this is one of those weeks maybe to scale back a little bit. Um, your your kind of normal investment. We got we do have the U.S. Open coming up next week, um, so so you kind of have to wonder what these guys, uh, as far as the top of the board, or or how motivated are they to try to win this golf tournament, uh, or are they just out there to get tuned up for next week? Um, but but we certainly have any week of PGA DFS is a fun week. Um, so we're going to go through the salary scale, talk about a couple of guys, and and just kind of have a fun week this week, man. Get ready for a huge event next next week in the U.S. Open. Yeah, we really uh, with 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 very little course history, like you say, you just kind of have to go with what's out there in front of you. So we're just going to hit the pay scale now. 10K and above, Hatton, Fitz, Fitzpatrick, Kepka, Johnson, uh, 10K and above. But really, you could break this down even further, and it's really the top two, then the next two, right? So DJ Kepka, you gonna be taking a look at either one of them? Well, I think I think in the strength of this field, you almost have to, Andrew. Um, you know, a, a field like this kind of naturally lends itself to stars and scrubs um, because the uh, mid range is fairly weak, uh, full of inconsistent players. So when that's the case on a salary scale, I normally uh, will kind of lean stars and scrubs. I want to lock in a couple of really top options that I feel comfortable with, and then. I'm willing to gamble the rest of the way. However, this week, uh, you got two guys, the, the the two most talented players in this field, and it's not even close, and Dustin Johnson and Brooks Kepka uh, are guys with question marks. Um, DJ has not been uh, the DJ that we're used to seeing uh, throughout 2021, certainly not the DJ we saw in 2020. Um, so the, there's question marks there, but he is a South Carolina native. Um, you do have to feel like he's trying to trying to salvage this year, uh, if we're if we're speaking frank, um, and, and to get geared up for Torrey Pines next week. So, you know, DJ certainly is is a talent that can win any golf tournament. We've seen him, you know, it feels like come out of nowhere and just go on monster runs. And that can kind of start at any time, you feel with DJ. Brooks Kepka, uh, been injured, been banged up, been up and down, been out, uh, missed some time. Came back. We all know what happened at the PGA. Uh, made an extremely deep run there, right in that thing until the end. And we know that he's going to be gearing up for Toy Pines. This is a you have to feel a tune-up start for Brooks. Um, we've seen him play really well uh, in weeks prior to major championships, kind of as he's gearing his game up. But we've also seen him in kind of you know nondescript tour events mailing in. Um, I do think that he'll be trying to get dialed in for next week. Uh, and, and I do feel like he has some positive momentum from Kiowa, but we still have to also have the injury concerns. Um, so like I said, both these guys up the top where we'd normally go come with question marks, man. Well, what's your thoughts up there? It's kind of a crazy week, Andrew. What are you thinking? You, you're going to be uh, rostering Brooks or DJ? I mean, I feel like, um, I could see myself rostering, uh, rostering Kepka maybe a little bit. Um, uh, he's definitely, playing better or even though he's had the injury issues showed a lot at Kiowa in this course like you said could match up a little bit um a name right below him kind of I mean I hate to think that you're actually think you consider rostering Fitzpatrick on a bomber course only $700 cheaper over Kepka or DJ but you have to think Fitzpatrick's probably played this course a few times 
just being in that area. I, you know, honestly, coming into this week, like you said, we're probably going to go a little lighter. I would have no problem not rostering a person at all till I get to the mid-age, Joe. So, yeah. in saying that, I can yeah, see myself man. bypassing all these guys. Um. Yeah, it's, it's a reasonable take, Andrew. Reasonable take, Andrew. Uh, you know, as you mentioned, it, there, there's no lock them in type guys this week. It doesn't feel like. Really, all this is a gamble. We're just trying to pick a hot hand. Uh, you know, this is going to be – this is not – I don't see this week being the week where you're going to lock in three to four guys real heavy and, and just hope for the best. I think it's more of just, just get a bunch of lineups in there, that, you know, that you like and – this is going to be the number, the guy that gets in the hole, uh, you know, makes a lot of birdies, uh, plays you get on fast. You know, this this more than ever is going to be a week that where you feel like you needed to, to scratch off people that just don't have a chance. And I, I'm going to throw a name out there, and we're going right down the salary scale quick here. First person I'm rostering this week is Kevin Kisner at 8,700. Uh, the only other person I could consider myself rocking in there would be a, a Harrison English, 99. Other than that, I'm going straight past all those guys down to uh, Kisner. I know this is a long golf course, but like you said, it's going to play firm and fast. And the dude, if he gets that putter hot, man, he can go low, even if it's long. So, Kevin Kisner is going to be my first guy locking in. You know, he also puts good on uh, Bermuda Greens, Joe. Yeah, uh, South Carolina native, man. So, you know he's very familiar with this golf course, very familiar with this style of golf course. Um, so yeah, good, good call on Kisner. And as you mentioned, um, we kind of want to lean distance, um, but because it is so open, but you also have to, uh, you know, kind of consider these guys that are more accurate hitters, um, experienced guys that have handled different types of tracks. I mean, we, we saw what played well at, at Royal Melbourne back in the president's cup. So, I mean, you can't rule out guys like Hatton, uh, Tommy Fleetwood Poulter, uh, Patton Kazar is a birdie maker. Uh, a lot, he was pretty popular last week at Memorial and, and, and did not play well. But, you know, that golf course really didn't suit his strengths, whereas this one does. A lot of, a lot of comparisons to Sea Island, Andrew, um, down there. So, you know, that that's an area that you're familiar with. And I, I can certainly understand kind of the comparison to, uh, you know, some of the Sea Island tracks. Um, but Kazar there is interesting. Garrett Kigo. Um, is a player that's uh, been dominant in, in stretches on the uh, Euro Tour. I think he's only 22 years old. Um, caught up a lot of attention there at the PGA in that last round when he kind of went on a birdie run. But they, they've certainly priced him up this week. To see him at 9K is fairly surprising. Um, almost hoping he was a player we could catch flying under the radar. Um, anytime you're talking about bombing gouge tracks with Bermuda Greens uh, and need birdie makers, Keith Mitchell comes into the conversation, Andrew. Um, so, you know, even though there's that inconsistency there up and down, I, th I think you can look at Keith Mitchell because he can make birdies, he can bomb it, and he is a great Bermuda putter. Uh, Brant Sedeker's a guy I've been on. He kind of faded out uh, on us a little bit the last week or two, but, you know, I'm willing to go back on this type of golf course. He can make birdies. Um, he actually rates first in this field and strokes gain on par fives over the last 24 rounds. Um, kind of surprising, but... You know, I'm definitely willing to, to roll with a guy like Brent Snedeker, but I hear you. Um, got an eye on Stallings and Doc there at 8K. And, and as you move down into the sevens, man, just more hit or miss guys. Luke List, we know, is a tremendous ball striker, but, you know, the putter, who knows. Uh, and then RCB has kind of shown some flashes there off of Cabrera Bayo as you start getting down into the sevens. But who who you looking at down there, man? Vincent Whaley's kind of been a pet player of mine here lately. Um, Sepp Strzok, I'm always opening to uh, rosterings. But who, who are you looking at down in the sevens, AP? I'm looking at uh, basically uh, you, you hit right the nose right, or hit the nail right on the head, Joe. I'm looking at any player that played golf in college or grew up in the south, uh, in the Georgia, South Carolina area, played a lot of those golf courses. So, uh, you know, Naismith uh, yeah. is, is a name. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, like I said, I, I know Fitzpatrick is way up there. But I love him. Uh, I just don't know if I you can pay that price for him in, under this circumstances. So um, I'm looking for golfers that played it in the South uh, growing up. And, uh, yeah, Naismith, uh, Rings of Bell, um, Vaughn Taylor. It's crazy to me, Vaughn Taylor, 7,400 in any field. Uh, but, <clears throat> I mean, he fits the bill. Patrick Rogers, 
fits the bill. Duffner, even as scary as that sounds, fits the bill. He's actually been playing a little better, Joe. You got to give it to him. Uh, he's only putting it 35 times around now. So uh, uh, he's doing a little better. Uh, like you said, you're looking at party, par five scoring. You're going to be looking, this is to me, par five scoring. Uh, you're going to be looking at where they play college golf. Joe, also look at uh, average birdies per round. That's, you know, if they fit those three check marks, I'm throwing them in there. Uh, when you get down to the sevens, uh, normally I'm all over like a Scott, Scott Piercy. Kicking him out this week, Joe. He's gone. He's a goner on my list. Uh, so it's not just necessarily the ball striking. I do love the Kevin Mitchell call out, another Tennessee guy. And he's played great over the last three months. So Harrison Smith and him went, guess what, played high school golf together. So uh, there's that. Um, you know, there's not really uh, – I can't think of a, another course set up like, other than what you said in Melbourne. And there's just such a uh, small sample size for us to go on on that. So I, I don't really, you know, you know, maybe Mark Hubbard makes a little sense. He hits the T-ball pretty far and puts pretty good. Uh, scary as it sounds, Padre Carrington makes some sense. Oh, John Pock making his debut. I know you're going to be all over that, right? Oh, you know it, baby. You know it. Uh, uh, I think he's uh, – is he actually turning pro or is he going to play next week in the U.S. Open? Feel like he's turning pro. Uh, okay. We have to look it up I, I on the PJ website, I, I, but you're about I right. It was just a, I kind of thought it was this might just be a warm up for the U.S. Open, which I was thinking he was in. Uh, but yeah, either way, uh, unbelievable player out of Florida State. Uh, beat out our boy Ron Hall for the uh, the Ben Hogan Award. So a very very good player, Davis Thompson, uh, another really good amateur out of the University of Georgia that's in this field. We saw him make some noise at Wingfoot. Uh, a year ago, played well there um, before kind of fading out. But yeah, man, I mean, you might just want to grab grab some of these these talented guys. This this golf course is new basically to the entire field, uh, so why not grab some young talent with upside? I'm looking at Roger Sloan there at seven K. He sticks out. He's 18th in this field in strokes gained tee to green, and also 18th in the field in birdies are better gained. Um, so I feel like he's actually one guy. You know, there aren't many on this salary scale that might be underpriced, but you, you might want to call Roger, Roger Sloan underpriced there at 7K. Um, Bryce Garnett's kind of just a veteran uh, that, that we've seen put put things together from time to time. Cameron Percy's an Aussie. Uh, if we want to draw, you know, some comparisons to Royal Melbourne, there aren't many Aussies in this field, aren't many guys that played on in, in that President's Cup in this field. So even though we feel that, that Melbourne's a nice uh, comp, not really a lot we can do with that. Um, but, yeah, man, you mentioned John Pock, definitely there. Cole Hammer, really talented amateur uh, out of the University of Texas. Luke Donald, for some reason, Andrew, uh, kind of drawing my eye there. He played well in the Byron Nelson. Um, certainly not long off the tee, but we know he's an excellent putter, and we know he's kind of experienced and can, can handle any type of track that's thrown his way. Um, but as you move down, man, it just gets uglier and uglier and uglier. This field is pretty gross. Yeah, it is pretty ugly at the bottom. Gives you a little bit of the uh, Puerto Rico feel, maybe just a touch. Uh, name I'm gonna throw out here at the down here is uh, uh, Kevin Tway. Uh, he seems to show up whenever you play him in these uh, big golf courses. He's shown up from time to time. Uh, Chase Seifert, uh, you've thrown him out several weeks. Uh, he's got a load of talent. I would, I probably wouldn't be uh, against throwing him up there. Uh, didn't you know he played pretty good at the PGA for uh, the first round and I know he fell off there I think he missed the cut uh, excuse me I was talking about the Charles Schwab played pretty decent the first round the Charles Schwab fell off after that um, man Scott Brown didn't seem like that long ago we were talking about him being a first round leader you know half half the <laughs> weeks on the PGA tour he has dropped off quite a bit but he's still in his field Pete Malnati's he's not played great but he's a good price. Uh, is it time to give up on Will Gordon, Joe? Yeah, it's tough to pull the trigger on Will Gordon, man. Uh, I think we want him to get there, but I don't know that he is there uh, right now. I'm not saying that he won't be at some point in the future, but, man, uh, it's, it's been a rough go for Will. Um, I'll, I'll throw out a random name, Andrew, uh, since we're kind of reaching this week. I'll throw out Bryson Nimmer down there at 6,300. He's from Lufton, South Carolina. 
and uh, kind of familiar with him. He had a T27 in the Knoxville Open, um, kind of playing on the KFT Tour, um, played in the Puerto Rico Open, had a T39 in that. Um, so he's a South Carolina boy that's kind of right in his backyard. So I'll toss out, you know, we're, we're, we're reaching this week. I'll, I'll toss out Bryson Nimmer there at 6,300 uh, since we're down there talking Will Gordon type situation. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I mean, I hate to move. We just don't know this field, Joe. I mean, we don't know this tournament, don't know this field. So I feel like we're kind of rushing through this episode, but without much, you know, back knowledge, you know, there's not much that two statistics guys could go off of. So, um, before we get to the last bit here, uh, I, I'm going to say Greg Chalmers, uh, played pretty good a few weeks ago at the Wells Fargo, missed the cut. He's 48 or 49 years old. Uh, <clears throat> um, he is, uh, he's got some game. He's from Australia. He's 6,300. That'd be a sneaky guy. We get big vet. Uh, finished top second in the Puerto Rico Open. Like I said, very similar field. We just don't know where to go. I, th- I feel like this is going to be a scrubs and scrubs week. Instead of stars and scrubs, it's going to be scrubs and scrubs. Throw so six yeah. people in there and see what happens. There, there aren't many. There aren't many stars even up at the top. Uh, w- once you get outside those top, uh, top dozen guys, if if you, that's probably being a little bit generous. I mean, you got some interesting guys up there around the nine k range and down into the eights, but. Uh, when I say interesting, that doesn't equal consistent. Uh, so you're you're right, AP. That's a pretty nice way of putting it. Scrubs and scrubs lineups uh, is probably what most of us are going to end up with. Uh, I think it's one of those things, man. Uh, dig into the research. Look at birdies or better gain. Look at par five scoring. Um, you know, look at driving distance. Uh, you know, maybe lean lean veterans if if you're not you know not in on the driving distance train. I always like grabbing these young guys um i'll have some johnny pock i'll have some uh you know i'll have some uh davis thompson i'll i'll jump in on these guys just have a little fun with it it's definitely a scaled back type of week for me though andrew okay then joe way out who's your uh who's your dart and who's your heart buddy who's got your dart and who's got your heart hmm. i'll say nobody and nobody I'm not, <laughs> am I allowed to say that? I'm going to throw my dart out there. Bryson Nimmer, I brought him up there at 6.3K. Um, you know, he's, he's a KFT grinder uh, coming out of the University of South Carolina. He's from, or uh, University of Clemson, I'm sorry. Uh, he's from uh, South Carolina, from Bluffton, South Carolina. So I'm throwing out Bryson Nimmer there down at the bottom of the scale. We're going with a true dart this week. And uh, heart play. Hmm. My heart's just not feeling many up, up here, AP. I'll go Keith Mitchell. Let's let's go bomb and gouge, make some birdies. Uh, Keith Mitchell at eighty eight hundred. Man, who who are you thinking, AP? You're on vacation. We're we're getting out here quick. We're gonna let you get back to the family. So throw throw me your dart in your heart this week, buddy. Uh, you said your heart play was Keith Mitchell. Yeah, going okay. Going. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the heart first. Heart play, a uh, guy that grew up on Bermuda, everything. Kevin Kisner, 8700. Mentioned him at the first of the show. He's the first guy I'm rostering. Uh, Kevin Kisner is my heart play of the week. Dart, I'm going deep in the soul and bringing out a legend of his own time, one of the best putters that's ever walked on the face of the earth. Aaron Badalay, Australian native. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know how old he is. He's got long hair. He's got a ton of kids. Still one of the best putters in the world. I mean, he's played, you know, hard and fast his whole life. So, gets that putter rolling. I think he had a top five in the MGM Resort Tournament over the fall. Other than that, I got nothing for you. Could be anybody down here in the sixes could show up. I mean, you, you look down here in the 6K range and you see some guys that are in the 6K range every week, and you see some guys you haven't heard of in 10 years. So, uh I'm just anytime, going in out there. See, uh, anytime you see Ricky Barnes in the field, <laughs> you know, you know they're you know the PGA Tour is getting the old uh, the old the old book out and making some phone calls. When well, anytime you see Ricky Barnes uh, and Harrison Frazier, guys like this, anytime you see the, them in the field, you know we're, we went deep into the we went deep into the archives, big boy. Deep in the archives, I like it. Yeah, Aaron Badley could not go. That's like a half court shot, uh, and you got fouled, and they didn't call it move. You know, so. Uh, <laughs> 
um, yeah, that's my heart. That's my daughter of the week, Joe. Uh, it's kind of a crazy week this week, but we're going we're gonna to be fired up. Special guests hopefully coming for next week for the U.S. Open. Uh, have expected to have a lot more research for it. Uh, Torrey Pines, a uh, place that I love. It's my, one of my favorite courses I've ever played. And uh, it's really just a great golf course, a great place to hold a U.S. Open. And it hasn't been a U.S. Open there since Tiger Woods won it in 2008 with a broken leg. So um, can't wait for next week. Can't wait to see who all got in tonight. You know, there'll be guys getting the long. Today is the longest day in golf, as they call it. Uh, the uh, scores rolling in until midnight tonight Eastern. We'll be checking that up. So uh, stay close to your Twitters. Uh, and uh, as always, I'm Andrew Putters. That's Joe Nicely. Thank you, Rotoballer.com, for being the best place in the world for your daily fantasy needs. And this is the Turn Fantasy Golf Podcast. I decided that I'd give it one good try. That was my first big mistake I've already hit three